125 watt Renergy solar panel, three controllers, two are shown, each have their own battery hooked up. Right now I got my mini and a shop light on. This is the interface. You see a solar panel, a blinking arrow, a battery, a solid arrow, and a bowl. 12.6 V. The unit battery is at 12.6 volts. It will continue to charge to 14.5 four volts that it be full the solar charger with the Sun will disappear and the battery increments will be full I'm on manual control if I turn off the light and turn it back on and the only way to do this is to go into the mode to the built-in timer, increase, decrease to 24, allow to set up to the main screen, the light will automatically turn on, or long press the button again to save. The next screen, if I do not do anything, will go back to the beginning within five seconds. So we're gonna have a float screen, a return voltage, a drop-off voltage, a timer, and the battery. You long press on the main screen, you will not be able to do anything. But if you long press on the next available screens, you'll be able to change settings. I'm uncertain about the float vote, 13.7 factory setting. Should I keep it at 12.0 for a 12 volt system or leave it at 13 volts which is what everybody uses. If you run your system all day 12.6 volt is going to be the return of the unit. And when it hits down to 11.0 volts, it's going to shut off. And it needs time to recharge between 11 and 12.6. Once it gets enough power back to the 12.6 and higher, then you can reuse the unit. My unit has been on all morning from 12.2, 12.1 to 12.7 volts. I'm doing a test to see if my shop light as a grow light will drain my battery. Right now it's charging as the sun is overcast. You could change the stock. 10.7 to 11.0 or higher. This is the 24 hours. It has a photo cell built in that reads off the solar panel of changing the built in timer. Long press. You can set this for one hour, two hour, three hour. When it gets dark, The light will come on for one, two, three, four, etc. and shut off. Once it gets darker earlier, it's going to shut off a little earlier. So 7 o'clock, 3 hours later, 10 o'clock, it'll shut off. The manual on and off will no longer be used. You could press it once, nothing's going to happen. Press it again, nothing's going to happen. So you have to constantly go in to re adjust every single time so here I am if I don't want it zero if I want it to be on 24 when it sets 
it turns on. This is where you buy a 12 volt timer. You hook it up to the light, leave this on 24, and leave that in the on position. This is the built in timer with the reflection. One, two, three. The light goes on. Again, the light goes off. It's a manual on and off. It'll go from auto to manual by the presses. This is mode 16 to 18 different settings. The day, weekly, and so forth. You set by the hour and by the minute. And you can set the clock up as well and reset the whole thing. It's a very simple system to do. You hook it to the on and off, and you simply just wire it up. If you want to see this wired up, I could go into greater detail in another video. Like I was saying, this is a separate battery, a separate controller, same Renergy 125 watt. The solar panel, the battery, the light to the ones above. The on and off switch, press it once, there'll be a dB decibel, press it again. You notice the number six. The six is the manual setting for the solar and battery. This has a built-in timer as well. Works the same exact way. It's 730, one, at 8.30 the light will go off, it has a built-in photo sensor, when it gets dark on the solar panel, it starts the time. With the USB, 2 amps per, they're on 24-7, you could run 5.0 volts, you don't have to use any of these buttons, it runs off the solar as well as the battery. The ups and downs, the downside on our electrical storm. If it sees lightning, sometimes this will stay on to the next cycle. You have to come in here, disconnect the on lead of the light, reconnect it, it will reset. What I do, I may put a switch on one of the terminals to uh, shut it off in case that ever happens. That's the only downside I see of this inexpensive solar charge controller. The last thing to show you is the 601, 602, 603 of the battery. If you have a lead battery, flood battery, acid battery, you'll choose the one you like. This is a AGM battery. It stays on 601. Every single time your battery charges to the full, that's where the float is at. It reaches its maximum, it throws the voltage out, how I understand it. It's to be between 13 and 14 volts. I leave it set at the default. I covered just about everything in here. Be careful of these connections. They're like a 14 gauge wire. If you need to make this 12 gauge, simply get yourself some bullets and just alternate those wires in there correctly. Now, I am happy with this unit. No complaints. I hope you enjoyed the video and have a great day and thank you for viewing. Any questions, comments, I'll be more than happy to try to help out. Later.